Hello world, my name is Ethan Dangerwing, the director of Dopeness here at the Arts Garage. I wanna thank you for tuning in where we're gonna bring the Arts Garage to you. What we're gonna bring to you right now is a class from Edward Stinson III where he's gonna teach you how to create a comic. So please, please, please take it away, Edward. Thank you, Ethan, many appreciations. As you heard, my name is Edward James Stinson III and in this program, I'll be teaching you how to create a comic and some of the fundamentals that allow you to be able to start that process. Now, I'm gonna be teaching three main aspects of doing so. The first part is going to be the basic elements and principles of art. Now, these are, of course, important in all aspects of art, but when it comes to drawing a comic, these are gonna be very, very useful and we're gonna help out with just how to get our ideas on paper. Next, and the final aspect of it, is going to be uh, creating a character and then creating thumbnails of your ideas. So. In creating a character, we're going to start off with a stick figure, move on to adding forms on top of it, and then eventually we can worry about flesh and clothing later, but we want to get the basics of it. You know, there's a reason that Simpsons and SpongeBob are vastly different, but both have been going for many, many episodes, all right? So, first thing we're going to do is get into the elements and the principles of drawing. Now, when doing this, you always want to remember that it's called the elements, and elements can't be broken down any further. You have to remember these elements as you're drawing as they are the foundations of what will create your artwork. Now, the very first element is, of course, line. Eh, it's a bit thin. I'll make it a bit thicker so you can see it, my friends. Excellent. Now, when we go to the line aspect of art, remember, nothing else can really be created if you don't have lines. So, we also want to get ourselves used to how lines are used on paper. Of course, think about the directions that lines can go. Let's start with vertical. And so you want to train yourself in how to make these lines consistently and how to make them uh, comfortable for you. As you get better and better at making the lines, you get better and better at all of your artwork. Remember, it's the elements of art. This is the foundational skill that will assist you in all artwork. Now we can go with horizontal lines. Next, keep it simple, let's do diagonal lines. We'll go diagonal from left to right, and then diagonal from right to left. Now, of course, this seems simple, but Practice is what makes you a better artist. No one gives you a football and expects you to throw like a starring quarterback. You have to practice thousands of times before you can get there. It's the exact same with artwork. Practice lines. Practice making the line shorter, but still consistent in size. Practice making these patterns with your lines, and you'll be able to start seeing how lines can be used to generate textures, designs, geometric patterns. You'll start seeing lines in everything that really is art. So, next, um, as we are going to move forward into the next uh, element of art, let's also, again, remember the other elements that combine into it. Line is the main one. In order to create value, value is acknowledging that there are different shades between black and white. There's a billion different versions of gray, but values are understanding how those grays are used in artwork. So, let's get back to it and write that down for you. When creating value in a picture, it's of course you attempting to show where dark and light is. In order to do that, you have to show how to make it look darker to the eye. In order to do that, pressing hard with the pencil, sure, that's the easy way to do it. What if you don't have a pencil? What if you're using a pen? What if you're using a marker? What if you're using paint? More often than not, it's gonna be the same opaque color all the way through. So you wanna figure out ways to do that by using lines. If you're using a line, of course, you can start with them all being a consistent spacing apart. However, what happens if you start with them being very close together and slowly space them apart? Notice that it looks darker on this side and a bit lighter on this side. That's because the eye is seeing more mass. It's more dense on one side of the picture. Now, you can also do this by just layering on where the lines go. If you already have a structure here, let's on, on, add on other layers of lines and make them go in other directions. Your eye can clearly see there's a difference of line here. By doing that, you can see that it's a bit darker in certain locations. Now, you also, going back to lines, want to learn how to curve your lines smoothly. A lot of people, when they try to make curved lines, they'll do this multi-step process of making a single line. That creates hairy lines. You know, you, you don't want to do all that. that that's that's kind of rough. You want to get better at making sure that your line work is very clean. Make very long, distinct lines. Even if they're not perfect, the confidence in the line will be felt by those who are looking at the piece. Notice that as I'm following the curves with other lines, 
a flow is created. Whether you intended it or not, whether your mind knew it was going to happen or not, it starts to subconsciously see that flow be created. And you also want to get used to creating smaller versions of these curves. As you do that, you can start seeing how kind of a shape begins to form out of it. You can kind of imagine structures. All right. Now, I got a bit ahead. Sorry, I was a big side with values. But let's go on to the next element. The next element is going to be texture. Okay. Now, again, it's an element. You cannot create texture if you don't have line and value before it. You must, must have these aspects. Let's start with some basic textures. Let's do wood. Okay. And we're going to create a small little rectangular prism here just so we have a surface to draw on and you can imagine it in 3D space. Now, watch. We're going to start with this little square plane here. We're going to add a wooden texture to it. In order to do a wood texture, think about the grain that wood has and, that, and the directions that wood can go. You want to try and emulate that in your artwork. You want to try and show that there's flow and rhythm and direction in how the wood is shaped. And see, all I'm trying to do is make these kind of vertical lines that create a rhythm in the work. And see, I can make these U's, I can do circles, different things like that. But again, now being able to care about my lines and the, the rhythm and pattern with them, I'm able to create this texture. Let's go and make bricks, okay? Now bricks, remember these are pretty much used in a lot of buildings you've probably seen in your lifetime. So you want to also consider you've seen this texture before. These are textures you have seen before. Trust what you've seen. Draw what you are seeing, not what you think you see. Truly remember what bricks look like. So you'll tend to remember that bricks are usually laid in patterns. So let's do the very basic classic brick pattern of, let's do this here, three bricks on the top. And when you do the next level of the bricks, start at the middle of one of the bricks. See how I started there? Now when I draw the next line over, go to the middle again, go to the middle again. You start seeing how a pattern is created. Continue it once more. Start in the middle, keep going. Excellent. And just continue the pattern all the way through. Middle, middle, here, here. Middle, middle, middle. Connect, 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 connect. Middle, middle. And you have a brick pattern. Is an excellent way to create uh, simple wall structures. If you're trying to create like a castle tower, if you're trying to create some form of a road and it's a, a laid path on the road, this is a really neat way to create that texture and create that feeling in your piece. Now, the next one we'll do, let's do, let's do fur. That should be interesting. In a true testament to how important lines are. You can't make the fur texture without creating the lines. And for this one, I'll actually use a pencil for the box because remember, fur comes off of the skin. If it comes off of the skin, then it's not stuck in the box. So you wanna do layer by layer. Here, watch what I do. We're gonna start at the bottom corner here. And we're gonna start by kind of making the fur go out in different directions. And you'll notice I'm doing kind of this technique where I'm starting on one side, I'm pulling the pen off the paper as I get to the end of the stroke. And do it in layers, but you'll also notice a majority of them are leaning left. So it gives a direction to where the fur is going. And at first you'll say, oh, I mean, it looks kind of scraggly, but is that okay? Trust me. As you do it in layers, it'll start adding up, start adding up. And again, this is a very basic way of doing fur that if you use it, of course, offers you the ability to do it, but it can be expanded on. You can start adding values to it. You can learn uh, different line methods of creating more realistic furs. And you can also realize that it kind of looks a bit like grass. All right? Grass, however, when I try to draw it, will have a, a little V shape. And that way you can see the individual blades of the grass. All right. So let's go on to one more texture just to get the, the feeling of it. All right. And we will do cobblestone. Again, this is actually another really easy road method, but this is very different than how you draw bricks. And you want to consider 
using your lines to create these masses that take up space in the picture. Remember, cobblestone was an easy way to create roads that were just easier to travel on. The flat top of the road allowed a much more comfortable way to move. And using rocks lets you fill in all these extra little holes that were left over. So now, when I do cobblestone, I can just fill in all this extra little space. That's like the dirt left over between the rocks, you know? And in doing that, you end up with this really nice, actually like very beautiful texture, okay? And again, this is really nice if you, I don't know, are into fantasy, or if you're into history in any way, and you're trying to show uh, a historical road traveled often by the warriors of a land. You, know, you have ways to do it, and ways and reasons to use the textures. Always try and think of stories that go along with the things you're drawing. If you come up with stories while you're drawing and creating, it, it just really helps guide you and lets you keep that open mind and never really be startled or feel like you're stuck. Okay? Now, let's try out metal. I actually really love drawing metal. It's really fun, not gonna lie. So we're gonna do like a chrome metal. And again, this texture is just really useful if you're drawing like armor, if you're drawing a car, if you're drawing interesting futuristic buildings, if you're drawing bracers, anything you're trying to get done. So we always wanna try and show like the reflective surface of the metal. So because it's just a flat square, we're gonna have the, the light coming on it and the shadow kind of pushed to the corners of the metal. So let's start at the bottom here. Okay squiggle it up towards the top of the picture. Excellent. And then we'll color in this like little bar here. Now first it's gonna look pretty weird, but trust me, work with me my friends, work with me. As this goes up, we'll do a second bar on this other side, but we won't let it go quite as high up, but we will let it be a bit wider. And again, I will also tell you right now, there is no perfect way to draw a metallic sheen Okay, but you do want to care about how light would affect metal. And when it comes to a factor like this, light is going to hit it dead center and push the shadows to the edge of the structure. So doing it like this, adding these lines. Remember, I'm not using a pencil. So I have to be able to add value to the picture. Okay. I have a bit of a metallic shape here, or a metallic structure. Okay, excellent. Now, yep, we'll keep on going, sorry, I'll get, I'll get stuck on this all day. Let's go to shape. That's the next element you really want to think about when you are creating. And we frankly already kind of used it up here when we are doing bricks and cobblestone. Shapes is anything that really uses two dimensions, length and width. Of course, diagonal lines use aspects of both, however, Realize that two dimensions are only ever on one plane. A square is a two-dimensional shape. A circle is a two-dimensional shape. Triangle, a cross or plus sign, a semicircle, even letters. These are all 2D shapes. And that is perfectly fine. However, a really neat thing that a lot of people will forget about 2D shapes is that they're completely imaginary. You've never actually seen a square in your entire life. It's physically impossible. Everything in reality is technically three-dimensional. And that brings us to the very next element, forms. Everything that you have ever seen in your entire life has only ever been a form. Shapes are completely imaginary. They are ideas that help us understand parts of a form. So again, let's take this square here, or yeah, let's take the square here. When you move it over here and you want to turn it into a form, and want to turn to something that's more realistic, you have to make it three-dimensional. Remember that shapes only have two dimensions, so they have length and width. Length is up and down, vertical. Width, left to right, horizontal. Form not only has length, not only has width, but it also has depth. That means it goes back or forward into space things can seem further away or closer to you. And that is depth. And so when I try to uh, represent that to myself, length is of course up and down, width is of course left and right. Depth, I use cones instead of these arrows here just to show. 
and is back and forward into space. So again, take that square. We're going to move the square over here. I'm going to show you the, the, the things you really want to consider when you're drawing a cube versus a square. A square will only have, uh, let me get this for you, make it a bit more obvious. A square will only have up and down, up and down. Notice that these are two parallel lines, okay? And then we'll have left and right, left and right, another set of parallel lines. And then you have to show that there's depth lines, okay? These are gonna go further into space. So now let's put all, let's put all these concepts together. Let's do the square first, the front side of the cube. Notice that I have my vertical lines and horizontal lines. From here, I have to have my depth lines. So I'm gonna pick three points of this square here, and I'm gonna make parallel lines that go into the depth of the picture. And again, it's all, of course, on a piece of paper, so you have to kind of imagine this. You have to have the artist's eye and imagine that you can create a 3D form. Watch this. Create depth lines. One, two, three. Why did I choose three and not four? You can't see past the square. Think about it, that, you know, think about things being in front of other things. If my eraser is here, this is blocking a portion of my face. If there's something in front of the form, you can't see the back of the form. That's, that's just how it works. So you want to consider that when you're drawing the picture. And of course, use parallel lines. Now that you're at the back of the cube, look at this vertical line here, this length line, put that at the back. Notice that they're all three are parallel. Notice that all three of these depth lines are parallel. Notice that these two width lines are parallel, and if I add a third one here, I have a perfect cube. Easy peasy. Again, let's draw another one really quick, just to show you. Length, width. Depth, length, width, easy, cube, all right? Now, let's go to this triangle and make that into a form. Again, a triangle is a 2D shape, but if we want to make it into a form, we have to choose the depth lines. Let's let the depth go this way, same as the cube. You can only see two lines. Again, this third line is kind of imaginary. You can't actually see it, but you can imagine where the parallel lines still must go. See? These dots allow you to just represent what is behind the shape. Let's say I do it with this cube here. Excellent. And you're able to see, technically imagine, what is behind and on the other side of the cube. So, the one I really like to do actually is this cross. That's a really fun one to do. Uh, as a form, uh, when I teach my classes to middle schoolers and high schoolers, they almost always ask to actually learn how to draw this shape, or the, sorry, this form, because it's just very interesting and it's a, it's a challenging form when you're first learning 3D forms. So again, choose the points, vertices, the points where lines meet on your picture, on your uh, form. Here, 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 and here. Now, of course, you can see all of them. However, start with your depth lines at the ones that you can see. See, there's a point here. Do not forget this one in the middle. It's going to help you out later. Make sure they're about the same length. See, and I can't see this one, so I'll do these dots here so you can imagine it. There we go. I'll do the dots so you can imagine all the depth lines. Now, I have the depth lines, and because I had this original shape, I'm able to see the 2D aspects of it, length and width. Now I can go to the back side of this entire form and add the length and the width lines. And make sure you keep them parallel. You see how these are horizontal? Make sure that when you go into the back, these are also horizontal. There we go. Dot, dot, here. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, that's a close one. That, that almost got me there. I'll show you in a bit. Now we want to do our vertical lines and connect all those. Mm -mm. See? That was actually behind, but I almost got there. So we'll go here, get this vertical line back here. All right, and I think, da, 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 da. Ah! Yeah, got it, got it there, got it there. Ba, 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 ba. Perfect. And so this cross is now done. And you can kind of imagine it as this 3D form. Okay, very useful to learn how to do this. Now, 
after that, we want to care about the space in your picture. Space specifically talks about the positive and negative space of your picture. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have a page here, okay? And on this little, in this little box here, we're going to add triangular prism. We're going to add a rectangular prism. We're going to add a cylinder. And we're going to squeeze in a large sphere and back behind them all. It's more of an oval, don't tell anyone. Okay, so we're going to add these forms. Now, space talks about where there is and isn't something. All right? If I take this and I say, where isn't there something in this picture? You and your brain will imagine that all of this space around the forms is nothingness. There's no background, nothing was drawn there. It, it is nothingness. And so you will call that negative space is where there isn't something in the picture. When you look at these forms, it's where there is something. It's what your eyes want to look at. It's what your brain will choose not to ignore while you're drawing, all right? So you really, really want to consider positive space and negative space when you are thinking about your pictures. And again, this is an element of art. Everything on this page is something. So you can already see that there is a positive space here. The negative space is everything that isn't drawn on. There's a lot of negative space. There's significantly more negative space than positive space. Although these structures filled out the page, there's technically still some space in between the wood here, in between the bricks, in between the fur, in between the, the metal. And you have to consider that when you're drawing. Think about these things, all right? So next. After space, this is kind of a basic thing. It doesn't take as much in-depth thought as the others because it kind of always exists. It's the same as the other elements. Color is the very last one, okay? Now, of course, color has all its different aspects, and you can kind of have your color wheel on it. That's fantastic and adorable. Everyone loves a color wheel. It builds character. How can you not, okay? And again, you'll have your yellow. Do, do, do. You'll have your red. Do, 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 and you'll have your blue, all right? As you go into the color wheel, you'll get your mixed colors. You'll get the orange, you'll get the greens, you'll get the purples, of course. However, we're worrying about drawing today. And as we get into drawing, color can come after you get the basics of drawing.